How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video I'll be taking you through my transfer plan for the upcoming game week 13. So yes, we are back, the international break is coming to an end, a few days left till that Saturday deadline where we are going to be kicking off with Man City vs Liverpool. So hopefully you guys have had a very nice international break, I just came back from the mountains, completely disconnected and now I'm reduced and ready to get back into the FPL action. So in this ultimate guide, I'll be giving you guys a refresher of what happened in game week 12. I've made no content about the game week 12 review, so I'll use that to kick off this video. Then I'll turn the attention to the upcoming game week 13 talk about my transfer plan, as I do still have two free transfers to use this game week. So straight back into the action, if you guys are interested to see what my transfer plan is, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So let's go over a quick review of game week 12 and yes it was actually finally a green arrow, a very strong game week from ourselves and we almost halved our rank. So you guys can see there 84 points, a game week rank of 760k and we're currently sitting just below the 570k mark. So that rank looking more respectable than the kind of 1 million we're sitting at a few game weeks ago, so at least game week 12 was pretty nice to us. Comment down below, how did your game week go for game week 12? Did you guys get a green arrow? Was it a red arrow? If you guys went without Erling Haaland, probably a red arrow, but your team could have still looked pretty stacked. Then in terms of the game week 13 transfer plan, as you guys can see, two free transfers and 0.5 left in the bank. So let's go over where those 84 points came from. They weren't going to come from our bench. Strakosha, as you guys can see, a little bit of hope there that Flecken's injury was going to keep him out for a little bit longer. Unfortunately, it didn't, and Flecken was going to feature in game week 12. We then have Archer on two points, we could have maybe started him if you guys wanted to. And then we benched Gay and also Taylor. So Gay was the only kind of position that we might have actually played, but if you guys watched my deadline stream, I was quite vocal on the fact that I thought Crystal Palace would concede, as Everton have been looking pretty good from an attacking point of view. As you guys can see, the decision was right, Gay ended up losing the clean sheet, but it didn't help the fact that no other defenders actually got points in game week 12. So let's go over our goalkeeper department and there's been some concern over my discord server at the fact that Ariola has kept one clean sheet this entire season but the reason we've actually gone for him was that he was quite cheap and yes I do regret it as West Ham's defense is simply terrible. You guys can see that from the lack of clean sheets also the fact that their defensive numbers are simply terrible but yet again Ariola is just the cheapest goalkeeper in the game and that's why we actually went for him. So fingers crossed West Ham magically kind of improve over this international break Maybe their center backs went to defender school or something like that. I just hope we get more points in the future from Ariola. More points weren't going to come from our defensive department. Going to start off with Matty Cash, a disappointing kind of transfer since we got him on the wild card, but only the two point appearance. So his attacking numbers are still okay. They have dropped off since the first couple game weeks of the season. And because Aston Villa aren't keeping any clean sheets, he's just hitting blank after blank. So another one that's been pretty disappointing from our wild card. I just hope that Matty Cash can improve if we choose to keep him. But he is going to be on the transfer out block because the Villa fixtures do get tougher shortly. Then our transfer in this week and the reason why we are left with 0.5 in the bank is the fact that we bought in Le Charles for Tsimikas. So now on paper what you guys are saying there, why would you take out Tsimikas before his double digit return? But I will also voice that I would have benched him anyways. I wasn't confident of him starting against Brentford. And I kind of feel like the only reason he did was because Joe Gomez picked up a knock that we didn't know about. So what's worse, selling him or benching him? You guys can comment down below. Probably benching that amount of points is not going to look too good, but I guess transferring out wasn't either. But the player we brought in also got zero points. Le Charles picked up a yellow card, conceded a few in their fixture, as the Newcastle team continues to struggle with all those injuries. But this was kind of a future move that I could have also gone for, could have also looked at Livermento, but I just preferred Le Charles because at the current moment, Botman still continues to be injured. It's not the best transfer on paper and I might have been better off just starting Gay for one extra point. And if you guys kept Simakas, obviously a good hold for the future game mix. Then our second option, Gabriel, with only his two point appearance on that Arsenal defense, a lot of people are jumping on a double up, even a triple up. And their defensive numbers still look pretty good, but unfortunately in game week 12, the points weren't there. So as you guys can see from the defensive numbers, no one got any FPL points, unless you guys obviously started Simakas. Now let's move on swiftly to our midfoot apartment where things look slightly rosier. Got to start off with our captain Mohamed Salah with a massive 32 points. That's obviously 16 points doubled as our captain. So great game week overall from Mo Salah and Liverpool in general. Actually a pretty easy win over strong Brentford side. And if you guys watch the fixture, Mo Salah had a great game. So did we get the Kamsi decision right? Well I guess if you guys went for him or Erling Haaland it was tied. And at least owning both there wasn't much in it. 
But still really happy that I managed to pick up Mo Salah on the wild card, definitely an essential option. And Liverpool have some pretty decent fixtures coming up shortly. Then we're going to feature Heung-Min Son, didn't really flourish under that new look Spurs attack. Unfortunately on Madison, that attacking threat is going to go down slightly and Spurs overall didn't look too strong. So how will that affect Heung-Min Son in the future game weeks? I hope not too much and he's actually had a pretty successful international break. We have Saka with only the 5 point appearance, his kind of XGs are looking too great at the current moment. At least he did rack up some FPL points but he has also been one of those disappointing players on our wildcard. So don't you know what's happened with Saka but I think it might be the fact that Gabriel Jesus has been out injured. The Nostal tack always looks better when he's in the starting 11. But as mentioned, a little bit disappointing since the wild card. but luckily our next two options finally redeemed themselves. The first was going to be Jared Bowen with actually a goal scored at home. If you guys don't know, things was the first goal that Jared Bowen has scored at home this season as he's been quite an away game merchant. But luckily some points finally came the way of Jared Bowen. The patience has paid off but unfortunately he might be actually injured for game week 13. Then I'll make a differential, Adingra finally ended up returning, if you guys haven't watched the goal, definitely go watch it, it was a very Messi-esque goal. We practically bought Messi for 5.0 million in FPL and that netted us a lovely 9 points this game week. Yet again though, the only downside to this Adingra move was the fact that Cole Palmer yet again got a penalty that gets about 4 penalties in 5 games or something ridiculous like that. So yes, it was sweet but not as sweet if Cole Palmer ended up blanking as obviously we chose to go for Adingra over him. They're still very happy with the points, with the Brighton injuries at the current moment, Matoma looks like he might be out. I'm fairly sure that Adingra should start game week 13. But as mentioned, the midfield department does look slightly rosy than the defensive department, and in terms of forwards, it only gets better. So the first player was going to be Erling Haaland with a massive 16-pointer. If you guys didn't watch the Chelsea game, it was a pretty unique way of scoring, and don't exactly know if he deserved the 16 points. But on paper, you guys might be saying that Erling Haaland's massive haul was going to be good for our rank. It actually wasn't. I think because of this massive haul from himself, I lost about 100k in terms of overall rank. So you could have actually been looking at a big green arrow. So that just showcases the fact that Erling Haaland's effective ownership at the current moment is still pretty high. Has dipped off in terms of ownership. If you guys do recall, was about 95% owned at the start of the season. That number has dropped down. But in terms of my overall rank bracket, he's still pretty highly owned. So if only Haaland stayed quiet, it would have actually been better for our rank. As mentioned, 100k in terms of numbers. At least we did own him. Then our final player, Ollie Watkins, only managed the 6-point appearance. He's also been pretty disappointing in terms of the numbers. But at least he got us some attacking returns this game week. If you guys do recall in game week 12, I think Jared Bowen, Watkins and Salah all scored at the same time. So that was an absolute crazy 1 minute in terms of notifications. But as you guys can see, 84 points total for game week 12. Very respectable, a nice green arrow. Let's hope that we can build on from this. In the comments down below, let me know how your game week 12 went. Was it a green arrow? Was it a red arrow? And where are you guys sitting in the overall ranks? Now before we go over my actual transfer plan with those lovely 2 free transfers and 0.5 left in the bank, I just want to showcase my actual team selection at the current moment to give you guys the context of my team. So let's start off on the bench and the bench this week kind of picks itself. I've got Strakosh against Arsenal, even if he was going to play, I wouldn't feature him. Arch against Bournemouth might be debatable to start. Taylor against West Ham though definitely won't. And then finally Lachelles against Chelsea. Now we have had a little bit of an update from Botman. It seems like he might be missing the next few weeks. So I'm actually fairly confident that Lachelles should start the future game weeks. But even if he does, Chelsea are scoring quite a few goals at the current moment. So I think I'm going to bench the centre back. That'll obviously leave us with Ariola between the sticks. Now he has Burnley away. This is a good game on paper. Will he keep a clean sheet? I don't know, but I guess he does have a chance of it. I just hope that he does because it'll take the pressure off him slightly. Not really racking up that many clean sheets. And you have to ask the question when Fabianski might be rotated back in. But for the time being, I think that we should be fine. I just hope that he does perform in this game. As mentioned, there definitely is a chance of a clean sheet against this Burnley side. Then our back three at the current moment will be Matty Cash against Spurs away. Not very confident on a clean sheet yet, but maybe some attacking returns. Literally anything as this is a tough game. We have Gay against Luton away. Tough game also on paper. I know it's a newly promoted side, but at home they're pretty decent. So the defense continues to not look that great. Then finally we have Gabriel against Brentford. Now I did expect Brentford to put up quite a bit of a fight against Liverpool. That wasn't really the case. They were fairly quiet. So will the same be true against this Arsenal side? Now in terms of history, I do believe that Brentford are a little bit of a bogey side for Arsenal. So this could actually be a bad day at the office for Gabriel. So overall defensively, we're not looking that great at the current moment. But I guess at least my expectations aren't that high. Now let's move into our midfield department. And I've got Mo Salah against Man City. It's a tough game on paper. But I do back quite a few goals. 
Coming off that 4-4 against Chelsea, I'm expecting a similar result in the Liverpool side. So I do actually think that Mo Salah could be an outside Cam C punt if you guys do want to go for it. I think I might stick with Erling Haaland if you guys do own both, but FE Salah should be in the conversation. I guess this is the early kickoff, but just remember, the early kickoff doesn't apply to Mo Salah, so you can definitely do some damage. Next up is Human Son against that high line of Aston Villa. I do actually expect Son to be quite heavily captained, and he might actually be the best option going into this game week. At the current moment though, with these kind of injury concerns, if you do get some positive news in the press conference coming up on Thursday or Friday, I might be more keen on him, but I think it might be fine to just own the South Korean this game week. Then we have Suck against Brentford, this will be a tougher game on paper as mentioned with Gabriel, a little bit of a bogey side for Arsenal, but let's hope we see an improved performance from Saka and Arsenal in general, with Odegaard and Jesus hopefully back. Then you guys might notice that Kamsi armband currently is beyond Jared Bowen, yes I know that he might actually be missing, but if he was going to be back fit and maybe get some news from David Moyes on Friday, I'm actually fairly confident in this Kamsi shot. I just feel like because I own him, because Liverpool are playing Man City, it's a little bit unpredictable. I might as well punt on the West Ham option against a pretty bad Burnley side. But obviously this all depends on the fact that Jared Bowen is confirmed fit. If he isn't, I might be more keen to go elsewhere, as he always could miss out. But comment down below, who's your captain going to the upcoming game week? Is it Jared Bowen? Is it Human Son? Is it Harlan Salah? Or are you guys going mega differential? Always like to see what you guys are thinking about. Then the final option, a Dingra against Nottingham Forest. A good game on paper, as mentioned, with Matoma out. A Dingra should hopefully start. And at his cheap price point, the expectations aren't that high. Let's just hope that Cole Palmer doesn't get a dodgy penalty yet again, as then I really regret not going for the Chelsea man. Then finally up front, we've got Erling Haaland against Liverpool and Oli Watkins against Spurs. Tough games on paper, I guess, but I can see both players scoring, as the Liverpool Man City games always have goals in them. Then in terms of Oli Watkins, two high lines against each other that just spells goals at the end of the day. Probably the opposite's going to happen and it's going to be a boring no no. But as mentioned, if you guys do want to go for the camps here on Erling Haaland, I can't understand it. I probably would captain him over someone like a seller, even though he currently has a knock. The reason for that is obviously it's the early kickoff. Yes, I know the early kickoff, you shouldn't really captain it. But the fact is we should be getting early city team sheet news pretty certainly. And therefore you guys will know if Erling Haaland's starting or not. The funny case might come in if we get news that Erling Haaland is benched. I might actually start Archer over him and that's quite a big price difference. But if you guys want some certainty on this camp seat, very kind of certain that we will get early team sheet news. Simply too big of a game that we won't get it. So yes, the camp seat armband will probably on Bowen if we do get news that he's fit. And you guys let me know what your thoughts are down below. Now in terms of our transfer plan for the upcoming game week, the injury news might actually just play into our hands. For example, if Jared Bowen's going to be missing, I might just go straight for Mbumo, as I probably would have done that move in game week 14 anyways. If only Harden was out, we might actually have to do some more reconstruction. At least we have two free chances for that. But I'll wait and see what the press conferences do say. But as you guys will know, I've got two free chances in the bank and therefore I have to spend one. The team looks okay, but the defensive department doesn't look that secure. And therefore I might make a switch in terms of our defenders. So the defender on the chopping block will be Maddie Cash. Unfortunately, the game's a little bit tough in the short term for Aston Villa. He's got Spurs, Bournemouth and then Man City. And with the way they're defending at the current moment, I can't see too many clean sheets. So Matty Cash will unfortunately be on the way out in terms of replacements, there's not many. I guess we could go for a Pedro Porro, he looks pretty secure, but I do worry about all those Spurs injuries. So the current moment, I'm going to go for Saliba if I do this move. He's got Brentford, Wolves and Luton, not expecting a clean sheet this week, but I guess I wasn't for Matty Cash anyways. So I have enough money in the bank to do this upgrade, as you guys will know I've got 0 0.5, I'll be left with 0 0.2 if I do this move, but I'm probably going to wait for some more injury news just to confirm. If you guys could see another chance that I could potentially make instead of this, comment it down below. But on initial sighting, this is the one that I was looking at. You guys can also let me know your transfer plans for the upcoming Game Week 13. If you guys need any help, I'll try and reach out. Or you can comment on my Discord server where I am slightly more active. But this is going to kind of wrap up the video, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Tons of content still coming up, the ultimate guide and the team selection later in the week. So make sure those bonifications are turned on. Bye, Miss Hyo. It's been Davey FPL, and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.